Hey everyone, um, this is uh, in response to, to Garrett's question about a specific uh, exercises for the front ensemble for timing. Um, this is a good one. Um, it's based on, um, uh, I think Jeremy Gomez uh, calls this uh, Jedi Eights. He actually does it with his drum line and it's just like a, a front ensemble variation. Um, all it is, is it's a, a grid pattern uh, uh, for attacks. So we're going to play um, an attack on beat one. And then in the next measure, the and of one. And the following measure on two, and of two, three, and of three, four, and of four, and then one, right? And one at the end. So you just proceed up a scale. You can do this in all 12 scales. Um, I'll just show it to you as double stops. Um, and But you can also substitute in like one e and two three four one and a two so the attack of a of a three note grouping starts on one the end of one two the end of two three the end of three four the end of four etc so variations on on how to do this exercise so i'm just uh, counting one two i'll just count out loud as i go so one two ready begin one two three four one and two three Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, and two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one. Another good thing, kind of uh, in addition to uh, the the other question was uh, how to get rack players, for example, involved. So if you're doing the front ensemble, if you have a drum set player, they can play a groove to that. You can create, you know, a simple, you know, kind of a Brazilian groove on the on triangle and, you know, like a pandero groove on tambourine or any kind of or even if it's just a four bar loop from a part of your show that maybe the kid the rack kids are struggling with maybe there's a there's a ride pattern or a hi-hat pattern or um any instrument uh you know a wiro or a cabasa or anything like that so you can get those kids playing like a groove and then have the mallet players play with that subdivision um and the variation of that exercise would be um for example, if you're if you're doing uh, two sixteenth notes and an, and an eighth, we can go one two ready begin one e and two three four one and a two three four one two e and three four one two and a three four one two three e and four one two three and a four one two three four e and one two three four and a one etc. and then back down the instrument. So. That's a really, really good timing exercise. A more advanced one, and actually one that is really wonderful, even just for uh, you know classroom percussion ensemble. You can do this with hand drums, you can do this with keyboards, you can do it with anything. Um, uh, Tad Carpenter and Carol Carpenter were uh, our, uh, my pit instructors when I did drum corps many, many years ago. Um, and um, they had an exercise that they just called pick an eighth note. And what it was is really wonderful listening exercise and ensemble awareness exercise where they would actually just say, you are allowed to play uh, four eighth notes. And they would give us uh, two bars. So we're going to create an improvised uh, composition that is two measures long, filled with eighth notes. And um, we're in the key of F. And any four eighth notes in any anywhere you want to place them, anywhere in those two bars. Um, and they would just give us a count off, one, two, ready, go. And then we would just make something up. And at first, it was always a disaster because everybody would just play four eighth notes right off the bat. And then the rest of the, me you know, the second measure would be empty because you know we were just we're so used to just one two ready go start 
Um, and through guidance and through like manipulate, they would, you know, they explained, Hey, you know, you need to listen. And maybe instead of just jumping right off the bat and playing something, wait and react to what somebody else is doing. Um, so if somebody plays something ascending, you know, four eighth notes going up, maybe you wait and then play four notes going down or, uh, something like that. And then later we were allowed to do more creative things like, okay, now, you get to play two beats worth of notes. So if you'd like to play two beats worth of 16th notes or any rhythm for that matter, but you get two beats worth of notes. And so some of us would play maybe 16th notes ascending or something rhythmic uh, on, you know, on the low end of an instrument, uh, on maybe on timpani, you know, kind of creating a fundamental or, you know, like a bass line. Um, the rack players obviously got very, very involved and, you know, they would play their eighth notes on maybe concert toms or on different cymbals. Um, and then as we got better and better at it, um, they would add stipulations. So within those two bars, they would say, we're going to play an eighth note triplet on beat three of the second bar. So we would get to play our eighth notes somewhere, but then we would all play a unison uh, triplet on that third beat. Um, so it was really fun and it got to be where, you know, we got to ex be expressive and really kind of explore in a really controlled way improvisation. So it was a, it was a fun way to sort of, you know, get engaged in and really for us all to subdivide because you had to subdivide all of those eighth notes in order to, you know, for everybody, for all those things to line up. And it was really good for, you know, expanding our listening skills as well so that when we were playing in the front ensemble, you know, we were listening back to the drum line and we were much more aware of how our eighth notes or our 16th notes, you know, whatever the case may be, fit with the battery that was behind us in marching band. So that's a really, really great exercise. Um, and it's something that you can certainly make your own. Um, you know, there were times where, you know, we were in a certain key or we were told to play uh, an arpeggio or in uh, or, you know, this, there were times where they would say, oh, we're in F blues and we would just sort of be allowed to experiment. And um, it, it was a it was a lot of fun. And we definitely, you know, grew up quite a bit and, you know, added shaping and dynamic ideas. So if you're going up that you're, you know, you're playing a crescendo, if you're playing something melodic that's descending, that you're doing a diminuendo and all of those normal things. So hopefully uh, those a uh, couple of exercises can, you know, kind of lead to some timing things and you can incorporate those uh, into your front ensemble. So Garrett, I, I, I hope that answers your question and gives you something to kind of build on. Thanks.